Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. If you're familiar with our reviews, you know that we dedicate a significant amount of time to a phone's cameras, but the focus is more on the rear cameras, while selfie cams typically take the back seat. Not today though. In this video, we're going to do a dedicated selfie shootout between some of 2019's best phones and see who comes out on top. Let's get started. First, I'll introduce the challengers. We have the Galaxy Note 10 Plus with this 10 megapixel shooter. The Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max's camera is 12 megapixels, and it comes with a secondary TOF camera. Next is the Google Pixel 4 XL with this 8 megapixel selfie cam, and again a TOF camera. We have the Huawei Mate 30 Pro bringing a 32 megapixel selfie cam, plus a TOF camera. Don't underestimate the OnePlus 7 Pro with its 16 megapixel pop-up selfie camera. It's the same selfie cam as on the newer models. And last but not least is the Asus Zenfone 6. Its main camera setup, with its 48 megapixel quad bayer main cam and 30 megapixel ultra wide, swivels around to the front to snap selfies. First, let's see how capable the phones are with still photos. The Pixel 4 XL has the widest field of view, but its images are just okay. Their dynamic range is good, but not the best, and the shots tend to be a bit underexposed. The Zenfone 6 also has a darker exposure, though it does capture a lot of detail. The Zenfone's big sensor throws backgrounds out of focus nicely, no portrait mode needed. The OnePlus 7 Pro also gives you plenty of detail. Its photos tend to have a somewhat grainy look due to its take on noise reduction. The Mate 30 Pro has the highest resolution selfies at 32 megapixels, but its images come out soft, and there's no advantage detail-wise over the others. Skin tones come out yellowish too. The Galaxy Note 10 Plus has a bright exposure and captures good detail, despite having the lowest resolution at 10 megapixels. The skin tones do look a bit unnatural though. The iPhone exposes very similarly to the Galaxy, and captures great detail. Skin tones on the face come out a little warm, but it isn't too bad. Now let's look at a more challenging backlit scene. Actually, the whole group does a decent job at adjusting for the exposure of the face rather than the whole scene. The best results come from the iPhone, which was able to retain some of the highlights and the sky. It's really neck and neck here, but I think the edge goes to the iPhone. So how about selfie portraits? You would think that the devices with TOF cameras would have the advantage thanks to 3D depth mapping. Subject separation isn't great though, with the occasional ear or strand of hair sticking out. But all of the phones are able to make decent artificially defocused backgrounds. I would say that the Zen phone does the best job portrait-wise. Let's see how the phones do in the studio in low light conditions. With the lower 30 lux light setting, the Galaxy produces a sharp and well detailed photo with good dynamic range, but it's pretty noisy. The iPhone has low noise, but not a lot of detail. The Zen phone doesn't do a great job as far as detail and dynamic range go, surprising since it's also the main camera. Its framing is also really tight and both the Pixels and the OnePlus's photos are noisy. The Mate 30 Pro's 32 megapixel images are the most detailed and have hardly any noise. So the winner in this comparison is surprisingly not the Zen phone, but the Mate. How about with the selfie flash on? Some of the biggest improvement is seen with the Zen phone, thanks to its real LED flash. We see better dynamic range, detail, and noise performance. The other phones still had gains, faces come out more evenly exposed, and the extra light leads to more captured detail. Though actually, the Mate 30 Pro's selfies come out better without the flash. This one looks more artificial. So with flash on, the Zen phone comes out on top. Now let's add a bit more light. At 300 lux, image quality is noticeably improved. All of the phones do a decent job. But I like the Galaxy's color rendition the best. We also don't like how the iPhone's HDR tries to boost the shadows, which increases the noise. Here I would hand it to the Galaxy. Enough with stills, now on to video capture. These phones aren't on an even footing as far as video goes. The Pixel, Mate, and OnePlus can only record in up to 1080p, while the Galaxy, iPhone, and Zenfone can record 4K clips. Let's start off by comparing the 4K phones. The Samsung Galaxy gives you the softest image of the three, but the exposure of the face is great, and it's easy to fit everything in the frame. The iPhone has the widest field of view, so it's easier to frame yourself in the shot. It aims to balance the exposure between the face and the background, resulting in a darker face. 
The Zenfone has the tightest framing of the group if you use this main cam, but with it the Zenfone has the most detail and true-to-life colors. It takes the same approach to exposure as the iPhone. The winner is the Galaxy Note 10 for its good framing and exposure. Moving on to the 1080p contestants. The Pixel has a decent amount of detail, but the footage looks grainy. You can sometimes see blown highlights on the face, but it does an okay job of adjusting exposure based on the background. The OnePlus's footage is softer, though it does have some impressive dynamic range. It does a decent job with the exposure, and aims to keep the face well exposed rather than the background. The Mate has a bit more detail, but isn't particularly sharp, and does the worst job of exposing for the face. It does preserve most of the background highlights though. So the OnePlus comes out on top with this nice exposure and dynamic range. As far as stabilization goes, the Note, iPhone, OnePlus, and Zenfone all do quite well. The Pixel and the Mate, on the other hand, aren't as good at smoothing out camera shake, particularly with footsteps. And here are some samples of the recorded audio for you to check out. This is the iPhone. This is the Mate. This is the Samsung. This is the OnePlus. This is the Pixel. This is the Zenfone. The iPhone comes out on top in the outdoor scene. It's windy, but my voice sounds clear and natural and balanced with the background. Now back to the studio for the low light test at the lower 30 lux. Here, the Note's noise reduction wipes out fine detail, but dynamic range is decent. The iPhone has more detail, but more noise. Both the exposure and dynamic range are nice. The Zenfone has okay detail, but has blown highlights and the field of view is really tight. The winner is the iPhone, but none of these is great. Let's continue. The Pixel continues to unimpress, with a soft picture and blown highlights. The Mate's output is also quite soft, though you do see some detail in the hair and eyebrows. The OnePlus's footage has some nice detail and wide dynamic range. So the OnePlus wins here, though again none of these is great. Now on to the brighter 300 lux lighting. The Zenfone captures excellent detail, though dynamic range is an issue and the frame is too tight. The iPhone is less contrasty but much more noisy. The Galaxy has good framing and a balanced rendition of shadows. Winner, the Samsung Galaxy. Moving on. With the Pixel, the colors are warm and exposure is decent, though there is some noise. The results from the OnePlus are okay, but the background is too dark. Our least favorite here is the Mate, due to the unnatural skin tone. The winner is the Pixel with its more balanced exposure. So, that was a lot of selfies. Let's do a quick recap. As far as stills go, these phones are all pretty capable, with a few upsides here and there based on your personal preference. Our favorites were a tie between the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Selfie videos, on the other hand, are a bit more complicated. For the phones that max out at 1080p, the OnePlus 7 Pro's footage looks the best, though I don't like its audio. If you're considering 4K, I would say the Galaxy Note 10 Plus gives the most consistently good results, though the iPhone has the edge in audio recording. So that's all for now. Like it or not, manufacturers are paying more and more attention to selfie cams, and we're already seeing some pretty solid cameras on the front of phones. What's next? Hopefully some better portraits, 4K everywhere, and some decent microphones. Thanks for watching guys, and see you on the next one.